Hey guys, Kurt from Time Machine Transport. Good morning. How you doing? Excuse my disheveled look. Uh, but anyways, where I'm in our home right now, um, and I said I was going to do a video. On, and we it's we live in a nice apartment complex, but um, anyways, I said I was going to do a video on how to escape a. Say for instance, that patio door there and that door right there are. Um, the only way in and out. And we happen to live on the third floor. I'm going to show you very quickly. And my wife, she didn't know this until one day we had a fire alarm. We live on the third floor. So, my wife, we had an apartment. Uh, there was a medical... Uh, not a medical emergency, a fire alarm, and she uh, she was on the treadmill in our office, and she said uh, she, she didn't know because she had her headset on while she was working out, and she said she heard an odd noise in the hallway, and she opened the door, and she heard this, like this um, siren screaming, and it People were walking down the hallway, and they said it was a fire alarm. So so she had gotten, you know, she just got her jacket and went outside with the people. Um, anyways, when she had, I was on the road, obviously. Um, and she had said, you know, what would I do if, you know, if that was, if there was a fire outside the door? And I'm like, oh, I said, well, that's, that's a good, uh, good way to do a video. So anyways, um... So, if you were on the third, okay, so if you rip back, say this, um, this carpet, right? You go to the corner of the carpet and there are joists. Just like there's ceiling joists or trusses, there's also floor joists. I would recommend that you, now if you have hardwood floors, it would be different. Or if you had a laminate floor or ceramic tile, like in the bathroom and in the kitchen, that's a little bit more difficult, but if you have a carpeted area, you can peel back the carpet, and if you look, there's, there's plywood underneath this carpet. And I and I know all this because I used to be a general contractor before I got in the trucking. And there, you'll see nails in a straight line. If the joists are running this way, you'll see the plywood laying, and then you'll see nails going the length of the of the joists. Okay. Now, if the joists are going this way, perpendicular here, you'll see the nails nailed this way. If you had yourself a saw, uh, like a circular saw or whatever the case is, and a lot of a lot of this stuff is just prepping, you know, it's 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 virtually just prepping. You could cut a hole in the middle of the joist, right? You lift up the carpet, you take your circular saw, you plug it into an outlet anywhere, and you could cut a hole in the floor, and then you just big enough for yourself and like my wife this is all of her ebay stuff she sells but she's got her own little bug out bag and i'm not going to show you all the details in it but i carry one in my truck as well so anyways you would make a hole in the floor big enough to um uh to obviously fit your bug out bag and yourself in there and you could kick away if you're on a second floor right if you're on the first floor and you have a parking garage like we do, you're not going to be able to do that because the ceiling is going to be concrete. But if you're on a third floor, fifth floor, sixth floor, so on and so forth, if you live in a wood structure like we do, you can cut a hole in there between the joists because your joists are going to be 24 inches be apart from each other. Enough for a person to fit through. So if you were to cut a hole in the floor, and I know, oh, yeah, I got to have a saw for that. Well, yeah, plan accordingly. If you have a fire or you need to bug out, you need to get the hell out and you got somebody at that door and you got something you can't get down the third floor, you can cut that hole and then the ceiling on the low on the level on the uh, unit below you, the ceiling is gonna be drywall. So you just kick right through and you can just jump down to the second floor if you have to, or the first floor, or whatever the case is. Now if you weren't comfortable with that, you can come out here to your balcony if you have a balcony. And what I mean by the by the nails going the length of the see those nails and those nails that means your joists are running this way, this way, 
and that way. <sighs> we have to get them to replace these deck boards eventually. Anyways, so you could come out here. Now these, you have little star bits, so you wouldn't really be able to, but you could cut a hole right here with your sawzall or your saw, and you could jump down to the second floor, okay? So that's first thing. Second thing, if you come out here to the hallway, See that hats I just showed you right there? That's an attic scuttle. That means you could go into your bedroom. My wife's going to kill me for bringing you guys to our place. But you could stand up on this dresser, right? Pull out a drawer. You could use it, step up. You could use your whatever you have. Step up and you can knock a hole through the, through the ceiling, right? And there's going to be insulation up there, so it's going to fall on you. But if you had to, you could actually... Now here, I assume, because when I was laying in bed, and I saw a seam up here somewhere. So I assume that the joists are going this way. So 24 inch on center. So you can knock a hole right into your ceiling. You have something to step up into the attic, and you can get up into the attic. And you could walk now... You're going to have those joists, right? You're going to have those joists. Excuse our place is a little messy. You're going to have your joists. So make sure when you're up in the attic. Now here we have vaulted ceilings. So that goes right to the roof. But all there, this is, you can go up into the hallway. Where I just came out of. And make sure that when you step, you step on the joists. You step on the joists. Don't step. Because you're going to go right through the ceiling if you don't step on the joists, right? And then you can get your way down to another unit all the way down. Kick a hole through the ceiling and jump through. And I pulled our toolbox. That's way too out. And I pulled our little toolbox out. This is my bathroom. My wife's going to kill me. So, anyways, there's a unit over there on that side. So, you have this in our office here. You have... That whole wall, I mean, you can do it through a closet if you wanted to. My closet is a mess. Sorry, I should have been more prepared for that. But if you had, um, oh, if you had the wall here, you have vertically, you have 16 inch studs. That means you have two by fours. So what I mean by, you'll have a two by four here. 16 inches, you'll have another 2x4. 16 inches, you'll have another 2x4. So there's a gap. You hear that? That means that there's... See how it sounds a little different there? That means you're getting closer to the 2x4. So if you plant it directly and took a mallet, you could literally take this and beat through the wall, okay? And then you're gonna have a hollow cavity and then you're gonna see another wall on the other side. That's going into the secondary unit. And you just beat through this, or if you don't have a mallet, you can just kick your way through, right? And you, if you did it and you were bigger than the 16 inches, which my big ass is, down on the bottom it's nailed. And up at the top it's nailed. There are no nails in between. So there's typically two nails on the top that there's a there's what they call a top plate that goes all the way across your your top and then you have a bottom plate that goes all the way across, okay? And these vertical studs are nailed to the top plate inside this wall. Only two nails. So typically they have to nail them on an angle. Excuse my grubby hands. I was at the shop all day yesterday. I got to head back out there today and get my truck ready. I'm leaving tomorrow. Now, once if you were to take this cavity and beat through and then beat that whole area out or just beat through enough and then take this mallet and hit the two by four on the bottom or the top sideways, not up, but sideways, you can knock that other 
joist out or the other stud out. So now instead of having 16 inches on center, you'll have 32 inches to squeeze your bug out bag, your weapons, yourself into the next unit and the next unit and the next unit and the next unit, so on and so forth. Now, going to my wife's bathroom. It's going to kill me. Now on this one here, same thing. You got 16 inch on center joist and there's a unit over here on this side. So you have a way out here where you beat through the, the, the wall with your mallet or, or kick it and you're gonna have, see that? That's hollow. So between here you have 16 inch on center. So once you knock this out, you can knock it out all the way on the bottom and then hit that two by four and then break through into the other unit. All right. So that is, shut this off here. That's how you escape an apartment. If you can't get out that door, because let's step outside for one more second. I'm gonna show you down the hallways. So I just showed you that you have all them units all the way down the hallway. There must be eight units, six, eight units. You could go through every single wall to get all the way down to get to safety and then open up that door and get out, get out the hallway. Or on that side, we have only one unit. So you only have so many you know, only one unit to go through. You got the, the balcony with the balcony boards. You got the floor joist and you got the attic. So that is a, a brief um, summary on how you can escape a um, an apartment. If you can't get out that door and you can't get out that door. Or if you got that door you, and you didn't want to jump because... Three three stories will probably break your legs. If you're not if you're lucky, you won't break anything, but you'd be kind of stunned. But that's a good way. So, like I said, beat through your walls, cut through your floor, pull up your deck boards, or go into the attic. I hope it was informational. I told you guys I would do a video on it. And put your stuff away. Now my wife's gonna say, What were you doing showing our place to people? But anyways, um, Hopefully you found this video informational. Um, if you have any other ideas that you might want to tell me on how to escape, and that would be a condo, a house. Now, if you had a, if you had your house and you had an attached garage, you could beat through the wall into your garage if you had to, just by these cavities. And wherever you see like a light fixture, there's norm, there's boxes, there's boxes that the electrical comes into. And then you have all your connections behind here. Now, those boxes are normally nailed. Well, not normally. They're always nailed to a 2x4. So you either have a 2x4 here or you have a 2x4 here. So say, for instance, you come in here. Uh, let's see. Where's an outlet? Ah, right here. So you have an outlet here, right? That means there's going to be a 2x4 either nailed here or a 2x4 nailed here. Now, if this is the wall you're trying to break through, you're not going to want to hit here or here. But you know that there's a 2x4 here or a 2x4 here that goes from top to bottom. Now, if the 2x4 is nailed here, you're going to have 16 inches to your next two by four. So that means this is hollow. Or if it's nailed here, you have 16 inches to go over and this side's hollow. So anytime you see a, an outlet on the wall, you know that you have either a two by four on one side or the other. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. So you, you, you're not if you're in an apartment or in a condo or in your own house, say you're trapped in a bedroom, it, it that 
that distance applies when we got over oh, bug out shit man i gotta bring that down or over to the shop eventually but if you have if you're in a house and you're trapped in a bedroom that that 16 inch on center or that 24 inch on center that applies to all building codes and the reason why the 2x4s are 16 inch on center because it's a smaller board. It's a 2x4. So they require you to have one every 16 inches. The floor joists are typically 12 inches thick. So that's, that's quite a difference. Either 4 inches or 12 inches. So the bigger the board, the less spacing you need. So once again, floorboards, 24 inches on center typically. Wall studs are 16 inch on center typically so always keep that in mind so once again i hope it was video i hope, I hope the video was helpful informational if uh if you found it informational and helpful please hit the likes the likes the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel i'm gonna do a video today finally when i get out to the shop on some weapons so i hope this video finds you well ciao